Let's talk about corticobasal degeneration. So this is a tauopathy as opposed to an alpha-synucleinopathy. It's a asymmetric movement disorder affecting the cortex and the basal ganglia, hence how it got its name. And it presents in someone's 50s to 70s. And typically it is thought of as a sporadic disorder. It's not really a inherited disorder. For clinical features, cognitive impairment is an early feature. There can be behavioral changes such as apathy or depression. There can be executive dysfunction and there can be apraxia such as not knowing how to use a toothbrush, basically not knowing a previously learned action. And there can be aphasia as well. So movement disorders can also be present at presentation and they are usually asymmetric. So Parkinsonism is very common. You can see rigidity, bradykinesia, postural instability with falls. There can be a tremor and you can also see alien limb phenomenon. So what this is is when someone's arm is moving uh, by itself and the patient does not feel that he is moving his arm. There can be hyperreflexia as well. Uh, on eye exam, smooth pursuit can be impaired, and there can be uh, saccades instead of a smooth pursuit. For evaluation, they may give you uh, an example saying that an MRI brain shows asymmetric atrophy of the posterior frontal and parietal regions. These are the regions most affected as well as the basal ganglia and corpus callosum can be affected. Note that early in the course, the MRI brain may be normal. If a PET scan is done, it can show hypometabolism in those same areas that are affected. For diagnosis, autopsy gives a definitive diagnosis. On gross examination, there will be asymmetric frontoparietal lobe atrophy, and under the microscope, you can see tau-positive glial pathology and ballooned neurons, but you won't see PIC bodies or globose neurofibrillary tangles. Remember, this is not the only tauopathy, so you still have to differentiate it from other tauopathies. The treatment, unfortunately, there is no disease-modifying agent, so treatment is still symptomatic. Typically, patients will not really benefit from levodopa, for Parkinsonism, but there may be a small transient benefit in a minority of patients. For tremor, you can try treating symptomatically with propranolol or anticonvulsants. For rigidity and dystonia, you can try anticholinergics or baclofen. Uh, depression should be treated, and physical and occupational therapy can help these patients stay mobile. For prognosis, the median survival time from diagnosis is five to eight years, and infection such as pneumonia is the most common cause of death.